Hey guys, my name is Tim Zhang. I am a machine learning engineer at Wayfair Data Science Computer Vision. Today, I will briefly introduce how we synthesize training images at Wayfair. As you are probably aware, training deep learning models on various computer vision uh, tasks is a data hungry project. Take object detection as one example. Given one image, uh, you want to be able to localize what objects are in the image by drawing the bounding boxes around them. And you also want to uh, recognize what those objects are by putting labels on them. Say, this one is a chair, and that one is a table. So the ability of doing this is something that we human take for granted, because we have been seeing all those you know, images and objects over and over again since we were born. However, this is a non-trivial task to teach a computer to do the same because it just has no knowledge about what this world is whatsoever and we need to train it from scratch. So to do that, the key thing is to gather a ton of training images annotated with uh, ground truth data. So having that said, you're probably wondering, hey, this is not new, don't we already have uh, open data sets like ImageNet or Coco that can provide data like this. I think this is a fair point and that leads to a discussion on the pros and cons over different ways we gather training images. So whenever we talk about training images, it, it's made of two parts. One is we need to gather the images themselves and secondly we need to put labels on them. So to gather the images in the first place, the traditional way we do this is by taking advantage of what's available on the internet. You know, we have so many people uploading all kinds of images and they're just there. You can use them. But you may uh, very likely end up with a unbalanced data set. You know, for example, uh, you might notice in your data set you will see a lot of tables and chairs but not a whole lot for auto man or clocks, because those are just relatively rare objects to show up in the real world. Uh, and when it comes to speed and cost, uh, for putting the labels onto the image, what you would normally do for a traditional approach is by asking a whole bunch of people to manually annotate those images. Uh, but turns out this is actually quite slow and uh, very uh, expensive because uh, it requires a lot of uh, coordination and lots of training up front. And what makes it a little bit even worse is that the labels you gather uh, from different people uh, are not usually consistent and they're not always accurate because uh, you know people get tired very quickly and once they're tired they're uh, error prone. So in comparison, if we decided to go with the synthetic data approach, Essentially what we're doing is uh, we're taking advantage of computer graphics to render out images uh, that mimic uh, the real world as close as possible. So uh, what that means is that we can have total control over the entire image creation pipeline. We can manipulate what the objects to be included and where they are and you know everything we need so with that, we can make sure the images coming out of that pipeline is having this balanced uh, distribution over different classes. So that's ideal. Uh, when it comes to the speed, depending on the image quality you're looking for and the uh, rendering engine you're using, it could be slow or fast. And uh, in terms of the cost, once you have gathered a, a decent amount of renders, uh, the cost of each render will be amortized to a relatively cheap price. And last but not least, uh, one good perk getting out of the rendering pipeline is that um, you can make sure uh, it's guaranteed that all the labels are made consistent and accurate, so you don't need to worry about uh, this issue. So it sounds like the synthetic approach is the way to go. How do we do this at Wayfair? Um, before I answer this question, I really want to introduce this concept called uh, domain randomization. What this means is uh, the reality is really complex. 
we want to make sure our training data is as diverse as possible so it captures all different kinds of scenarios uh, and that helps the network to generalize better on images it has not seen before. So in the context of Wayfair, we care a lot about indoor spaces. Uh, and we want to run object detections on images that are uploaded by customers. But there are several things we don't know beforehand. Like for example, we don't know the content of this image, like what objects are uh, included in the image and how they're going to be arranged because everybody's home is different. So uh, to address this, how we do is that we create a lot of uh, high fidelity 3D models for products that we actually sell at Wayfair. And we select a portion of them and randomly arrange them into this 3D place. So we can put a chair here, we can put a table here, and we can put a, uh, an ottoman right there. Um, another thing that we don't know is under what lighting condition this image is taken. You know, as you can imagine, this image can be taken in a dark environment or bright environment. It could be in the morning, it could be in the afternoon. So if, we, if all the images are gathered with the, with the same lighting environment, then uh, it's easily going to overfit and the neural network trend uh, under this condition just won't generalize uh, during the test time. So how we do is that we introduce different uh, lights with different types, come at various sizes and placed in different locations. So for example, we can put a uh, plate light over here, you know, shining lights in this direction, and we can put a dome light here to provide some ambient light so that the objects are lit in different ways. Um, and the third thing we don't know is under what camera perspective the image is taken. So, for example, this image can be taken by a kid uh, at this angle holding a phone or by an adult. Uh, holding a DSLR at here. So those images come at different uh, camera perspectives and different camera perspectives means the pixel values are going to be different. Um, so, so to accommodate this, uh, we, in a very similar manner, we introduce cameras at different locations and come with all kinds of different parameters like focal length, depth of field, and IOS, um, uh, ISO. So for example, we can uh, uh, place a camera over here and let it to look at this region and this will be your image plane. So basically, given this framework of render and pipeline, you, what you want to do is to keep iterating through this whole, this entire parameterized uh, framework and randomize uh, those parameters. So over time, you'll end up with uh, a whole lot of images uh, that are different. And hopefully, they capture the, the complexity of the real world. So the whole thing can be achieved by 3D softwares like uh, Rin, uh, Blender or 3ds Max, uh, or game engines like Unity or Unreal. Cool, so this is a very brief overview of how we synthesize training images and why we do this at Wayfair. Thank you so much for listening and please stay tuned for this channel uh, because we have cool products in the future. Thank you so much.